For this review, we're talking about the Big Apple. And for that, we don't mean a fruit, a computer or an iPhone. We mean New York. And that's because this WSI model of the Liebherr LTM 1350 mobile crane is in the colours of Cranes Inc, which is a New York based company. This is a limited edition model and when we lift the lid off the trays, we see the Cranes Inc red colour. Before we get to the model, there is an instruction sheet included. And that's got line diagrams to illustrate how to fit the main parts. The sheet also includes the fixed fly jib, but that's not included with this model. You have to go to the standard Liebherr yellow model for that. Out of the box, we'll get the crane ready to run on the road first. And we'll start by just reeving up a hook. We use a key on the hoist drum and there's a temporary piece of tape which secures the hoist rope during shipping. Here we fitted the smaller of the two hooks that come with the model and there's a much bigger hook block in the box. Whilst travelling the crane has its handrails folded down to minimise the headroom and to represent that the model comes with a set of folded handrails. These are metal and they fix into position into preformed holes. Once located, they're a decent fit, apart from one which is slightly out of balance. To reduce the axle loads, the crane can travel without its wire guy attachments. And I'm not sure if the real crane can run legally in New York with the wire guys attached. But of course, in the cranes etc world, anything is possible, so we'll fit them on. Once you get them in position, you secure them with brass nuts and bolts. And tools are included with the model to handle these very small parts. As an alternative strategy, you could try doing this job with your fingers and thumbs, but then be prepared for a lot of swearing and high blood pressure when you realise you can't do it. So in this location, it's best just to use the tools provided, and there's no need to do the nuts and bolts up too tightly because you'll only break them. With the Y guy assembly attached to the boom, we then need to join up the guy rods. And the main thing to be careful of here is that you don't bend those rods whilst you're doing the work on them. So, as always, for any precision model, just treat it with respect and look after it. As you can see here, just to be annoying, we're doing the nuts and bolts up with fingers and thumbs. And it's this kind of spiteful and irritating behaviour that infuriates fans of cranes etc. across the globe. So, if in any way you are angry by what you're seeing here, I suggest you just get a big apple and eat it. So we start underneath to look at the mechanics of the chassis, and this is one of the most detailed crane models. You can just about see a fan and there's all of the suspension and transmission detailing, and it's high quality. The carrier cab looks really convincing in the crane's ink colour scheme, and that continues around the side of the crane. The wheels are very detailed and it's always nice to see branding in the sidewalls of the tyres. The inside of the cab is also very good if you can get your eyeball close enough to it. The outriggers also have tiny graphics applied. Moving to the back, there's a nice big toolbox, and the other detailing is equally good with the number plate and chevron graphics. At the back, there's another nice graphic and a grille, and it's the very small details on the crane which are pleasing, including these tiny graphics. The crane exhaust has got a nice mesh cover. The paint and graphics on the boom and the Y guy arrangement are of a very high standard. Another impressive area of the model is the engine on the carrier. Most of it is metal and there are also small graphics. Also looking very good on the model is the crane cab and although it's hard to see that includes a detailed interior. The counterweight tray has got metal handrails and the luffing gear for a fly jib is already reeved. The counterweight blocks are nice, although one here has a misaligned graphic. And it's always a plus point when a crane model has a metal hydraulic ram jacket. There are also nice metal spooling drums on the boom. The telescopic sections have thin walls and nice cranes ink graphics. Thank you. 
We dive back under the crane and each axle has independent steering. And they also have nicely sprung suspension. So the model engineering on the chassis is really good. And if you want, you can also set crab steering. Let's take the crane out onto the cranes etc test track. And it rolls along reasonably well with a little downward pressure needed to ground all of the wheels. The suspension is nice and stiff and works well. And we'll set the steering to see how that performs. You can get a decent angle on the wheels if you want. And that allows the crane to pose well. And if you want to push it along, you can also do some cornering. Once you're on site, you need to pull out the outriggers and they come out nice and smoothly. The pads can be stored in a transport position and to lower them, you just unscrew them in the usual way. That reveals nice smooth pistons, so the overall look is very good. And large metal spreader plates are also included with the model. Well, we're not traveling now, so we need to swap the handrails on the crane. And on the real crane, they would be hinged, so we could just fold them up. But in the scale model world, we have to do it a different way. And so we swap the handrails for a set that are up. These handrail pieces get located in the holes. And you probably need to fiddle with them a bit to get them located properly. One thing that's interesting is that the Cranes Inc. telephone number ends 1776. And that also happens to be the year of American independence. Okay, so we're all set now to get the boom up and it raises very smoothly because of the way the hydraulic ram works. It doesn't rely on friction. Instead, you use a small grub screw to tighten it up and hold a pose. We can now rotate the crane and it's smooth enough after some initial stickiness. Telescoping the boom is easy and straightforward. You just lift out the sections and each section has locking points. That means you can lock each section at either 50%, 92% or 100% extension. If you like to pose the model as the crane is being assembled, you can do that. And the counterweight tray rests nicely on the carrier deck. With the counterweight loaded, the real crane would rotate and pick up its counterweight. But the model can't quite do that, so we have to rely on the trusty giant hand cranes. The tray hooks over and for extra security, you can pin it if you want. Another feature on the model is the tilting crane cab, and it also has an extending foot plate. Now we've got the Y guy arrangement on board, so let's use that, and it gives the crane extra lifting capacity. So to begin with, we'll open it up, being careful not to stretch and break the guy rods. And then we need to fix the guy ropes to the top of the boom. Again, the connections are made by tiny brass nuts and bolts. And this time we will be good and use the tools provided. Once it's all attached, you can tension it up using the winches at the end of the Y guy arms. And then you can separate them out to give the maximum stability to the whole crane. <laughs> The Liebherr LCM 1350 by WSI is a great crane model. It's a really good mix of high detail and functionality. And all of that is enhanced by the beautiful Cranes Inc. colour scheme. So if you're looking for a really nice limited edition crane model, this one is excellent. <laughs> 